Well, Christy, just take a look around us. The tower up there, that is actually considered to be the demarcation of Mosul's easternmost perimeter. And we're going to be moving kind of carefully through here because there have been incoming mortar rounds, incoming rocket-propelled grenades, and there's a sniper uh, that's firing in this direction as well. But over here, that is the main road that leads to Mosul, and you can see that it has been burned up, and I don't know if Brits can get a shot of this, but that town you see on the other side of the berm, that is the Mosul neighborhood of Karama, and that is inside the city itself. It's only about 200 meters from where we currently are right now, and you have troops with the counter-terrorism unit, the elite U.S. trained unit, that have moved up all along this various different front lines. They've cleared through the town of Gokchili. They've been going through it throughout the entire day, uh, clearing it of any remnants of ISIS. They've come in across quite a few firefights, and now they are trying to secure this area in particular so that then they can actually begin the push into Mosul, the city itself, and they're fully anticipating that once they actually cross this road and get into the city, the fight is going to be significantly more intense. We've been speaking to some of the civilians who lived here. They say that the ISIS fighters who used to be here, they, a lot of them, moved away with their families, taking them with them into the city of Mosul itself. Again, just on the other side of that berm, some 200 meters away, Christy. And when Iraqi troops enter the city of Mosul, that is when urban warfare will get underway. And a lot of concern about the fate of civilians inside the city, uh, about them being used as human shields. What are Iraqi forces going to do in order to, to, to reduce mass civilian deaths? Well, they came across that actually when they were coming through this town of, of Gokchili and they had to go through very slowly, very methodically, and what they've done here is they've actually had the civilian population stay uh, within the town itself, and what they're doing now is going through and trying to speak to all of them, screen them as best they can. When they move into Mosul, though, things like the airstrikes that we've been seeing fairly regularly, especially in the farther away abandoned villages, things like the artillery uh, that they've been using, the rockets, the missiles that they've been calling in, that's going to prove to be much more difficult because Mosul itself does still have a population of upwards of 1.2 million people. And we have seen ISIS use civilian populations as human shields in the past, which is why it is of such great concern. And as you can tell, perhaps, there is no escape route. There have been no routes that anyone has established, in fact, for the civilian population mm -hmm. to leave. The Iraqi side is unable to do so. ISIS obviously is not letting the civilians leave. And those who we spoke to, Chris, just to give you one example, there was one group of civilians who were trying to walk towards the Iraqi forces inside this town when they say ISIS fired a mortar round into them and wounded a little girl. So that's also a risk as well. If the people inside Mosul were to try to make a run for it, they are also risking their lives just trying to save themselves.